Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another weekly wrap up. My name is Jeremy Cronemeyer. I'm operations manager for Wickham Financial Group, and I have Graham Wickham here, president and CEO of Wickham and Financial and Insurance Services. Graham, what happened in the markets last week? Yeah, thank you, uh, Jeremy, and thanks again for our listeners jumping on the call. Uh, you know, despite some semiconductor weakness, you know, overall we saw U.S. equities end the week pretty strong, and we saw the Russell. 2000 again that's the small cap index that rose nearly two percent while the s p and nasdaq gained a little bit less than one percent but that was led by utilities um that was a top performing sector so uh the semiconductor standpoint we saw that drop about uh just over five percent uh when we had one of a major uh not going to say chip provider but a company that uh, for a long story short, designs the machines to create the chips, ASML reports some negative uh, earnings, putting a whole spin downward uh, trajectory on that whole sector. Uh, if we go over to the energy sector, we saw crude oil futures fall about 8.8% over some growth concerns, maybe some supply concerns globally, and maybe a, uh, an additional concern that, that China and all the efforts that they're making it to shore up their economy is not going to lead to more consumption. Maybe it's just going to be slower growth. So that still has to unfold. We did see gold, though, um, you know, that jumped over 2%, sending a new high just over 2,700. Uh, U.S. Uh, Treasury yields, they were came down slightly. Now, keep in mind that they the yields came down, but they had also rallied a lot from that, that low. So that was putting some pressure, I think, on the housing market. And when we get into housing starts and uh, mortgage applications, so on and so forth, since yields really popped up. We go to manufacturing, saw some mixed results there. We saw some declines in industrial production, but growth still uh, in the Philly Fed survey. The Federal Reserve, uh, resilient, calling for a resilient economy. Maybe they're filling with some stronger economic numbers that we've gotten out there. Uh, the conjecture or the assumption might be that maybe the Fed only has to do 25 basis point cut in November, uh, which is probably more in line to what we think since they did 50 this last time. Uh, China just saw some volatility. I mean, they just had a massive rally with so much stimulus going in to help support the economy and support the housing market over there. That market just really rallied. Not surprised we might get some volatility even on the downside here uh, as that um, the government, if you might, continues to support uh, what's going on over there. If we look over to Europe, we saw the ECB cutting rates for the third time with another rate cut uh, expected. UK's inflation came down, uh, which has given some hints that, you know, there might be a rate cut in November for them as well. And we did see some core inflation slow uh, in Japan. Now, this week's going to be a big week. We got earnings, earnings, earnings. I think a thousand odd companies. Uh, are going to be reporting this week. So some names that we're all familiar with, Tesla and Boeing and UPS and Texas Instrument, IBM, so on and so forth. Uh, so really the heart of the earnings season, really starting now over the next couple of weeks, uh, there's going to be a lot of give and take on those numbers. But we'll be looking at some global flash PMI surveys that will be coming out, some manufacturing, some service trends, uh, kind of tracking what's going on. We'll be looking at some uh, kind of the effects or what potentially could happen with some geopolitical tensions with Israel and their potential response to uh, Iran's missile attack. That's always going to put uh, some volatility in the market, of course. Uh, we've got the Bank of Canada coming out with an interest rate decision and on Wednesday, uh, it'd be kind of interesting to see if they kind of follow in our footsteps and do a 50 basis point cut. Uh, we'll just have to see. If we go over the global finance meetings, financial meetings, we'll be looking at the IMF, the World Bank. Um, they'll be all meeting. Uh, we're looking at the BRICS summit over in Russia. And then China will get some stimulus policy announcements. In Japan, we'll be looking at their CPI release. Overall, in the United States, the economic data is going to be about housing, which with rates popping up, yields popping up as much as they had, I'm sure that's going to put some downward pressure. We'll just see if that comes through like that. And we'll get some durable good orders uh, showing up as well. Yeah, got it. Well, thanks, Graham. So yeah. I had a question for you. You were mentioning earnings there. Um, do you feel, what do you think earnings need to do to kind of keep this market going? Or what do you think going through the end of the year, what do you think it's going to do to the markets? 
Yeah, they got to stay up. I mean, the market's not cheap, but I don't know if it's egregiously overvalued as long as earnings are holding up. Just keep in mind is that when yields are moving up, uh, that puts pressure on earnings uh, because that's more of spending that has to go to service debt uh, when interest rates go up. So uh, it's not great to have yields bouncing back up. Not completely surprised to see it because I really thought they overshot on the downside a little bit. A little quick too fast, right? Maybe the market rallied a little bit too too quick too fast. So having a little bit of volatility in yields, the bond side, having a little volatility in the stock market side, it's not going to be surprising, but we got to have earnings hold up. Uh, not just, which I I think they look good, really good so far. We'll see if they look good through the rest of this earnings season, but it's really going to be even a bigger story for 2025. Can we support where this market is if we continue on this trajectory? So, yeah. Yeah, sure. We always appreciate the expertise, Graham. Thank yeah. you. And thank you to our listeners. Go check out our website. Go check out our social media pages. You can see these previous weekly wrap-ups and webinars that Graham's done over the over the over this year. Um, and then we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.